how's everyone doing out you all right it's cold there uh, back again dropping a second video of the day right for those that don't know um I, my name's Cody Lachey I'm a reformed criminal um, I've been in and out of prison been involved with gangs gangsters been on a gangster documentary trouble with the police been in prison all that bad stuff right um what I do now I do interviews with the media and I do vlogs uh, these videos on YouTube that things that I've got experience on and stuff like that right today I'm going to talk about things that things to take if you go into prison um, for obvious reasons right it'll become apparent as the video plays out yeah right so the first time I went to prison um, I was arrested on the street um, I was arrested for witness intimidation I didn't um, I ended up arrested questioned charged within the space of 12 hours refused police bail um, the police refused me bail so I went to court the next, the following day up at Trafford magistrates um, we we applied for bail. The judge gave me bail, but the Crown Prosecution Service, the CPS, the bastards at the R, they um uh, they uh, um challenged it. So if they challenge it, if they appeal it, you go to prison for two days, right? That just happened straight off the bat. So I ended up in strange ways that night. I wasn't able to plan ahead, right? The next time I went to prison after that, I knew there's a chance I was going to prison, even though. If you judge, if the barrister's telling you and your solicitor and the, the, you've gone for a pre-sentence report and they're all telling you you're not going to prison, right? Trust me, always pack a bag um, and everything you need to put in your bag will become apparent as this video plays out, right? So stay with me, right? So the second time I ended up in prison, I knew there was a chance I was going to prison. I did my pre-sentence report. Probation told me you weren't going to prison, right? The judge, my uh, sorry, not the judge, the barrister, the solicitor, all said you weren't going to prison, right? But um, what I did, um, because of the fuck up the first time when I went to prison and the stress and the hassle that it caused because I wasn't able to plan and put things in practice, um, be, like reference clothing, like handing out my, like, handing my house keys out to someone because i was the only one with a copy and stuff so like i say so i'm going to do this video and it, do you know what um hopefully this will help people because and it'll make a lot of sense as well as it plays out right so a, a, a day or two before i went to prison right this is what i'm advising you guys to do right on a on an a4 writing pad what i did um i put my bank card i wrote my pin number um for my mom to say look right um this is what I'm going to, this is what you're going to need, right? Um, th this is my bank card. This is my pin number. Um, I also had money on me as well, because I knew that when I went to prison, if I, I've got to have money on me as well, because uh, obviously I did end up in prison. Um, so yeah, so, um, so you write down a list, right? Um, of things that you might need, things like that. Um, what I did as well, you write down your friends and families, you write down mobile numbers and landlines for your friends and your family. This is very, very important. When you go to court on the day that you go to court, have the phone numbers for your friends and your family in your pocket because when you get to prison, for those that don't know, for those that know, you don't need to listen. For those that don't know, when you arrive at prison and you're getting booked in or processed as it's called, you're allowed a two minute phone call, right? So you in, in that two minute phone call, if you've not got any numbers on you, Unless you know the numbers off by heart, you're not going to be able to ring anyone, are you? So you ring people. Um, they should be expecting like a call from you as well because obviously they know you're going to court as a chance you're going to end up in prison. So you ring your mum, um, your loved ones, your family, your missus, whoever you're ringing, yeah? You say, look, you, when you when you ring them from prison, right, the first call, it's only for two minutes, literally two minutes, yeah, no longer, because the screw cuts you off, yeah, so you tell, you want to be telling them, right, quick, grab a pen, first thing, grab them, tell them, grab a pen, right, write down your prison number, my prison number, for example, is A for Alpha, 4009, Delta, D for Delta, J for Juliet, that's my prison number, that'll stay with me, if I go in prison for the rest of my life, that's my prison number, it'll stay with me, just like my army number, um, so yeah, so uh, you tell them, obviously, what prison you're in, you tell your family to book a reception visit as well, a reception visit, for those that don't know, is an initial visit you get when you land at the prison, you might not get it for two or three days, right, depending on how busy they are with visits and stuff, but you tell your, you tell your mom or your missus, ring the booking line, right, Google the booking line for that particular prison, and then they have to, not you as a prisoner, they have to ring up the prison and book um, a reception visit. It's only for half an hour, but within that half an hour, your friends and your family get to see that you're all right. Um, your mum might break down in tears, or she might give you a bollocking like my mum gave me. Obviously, if it's your missus, it's going to be a different scenario, blah, blah, blah. You get you get the picture. Um, 
take money with you when you go to prison as well, as much as you can get. Don't take thousands, obviously. You fucking start thinking, you know, what's going on here. Um, so, yeah, a couple of hundred quid or something. When you go to prison, um, you're not able to deal in money. Uh, money doesn't come into it. Your money gets taken off you, goes into, like, a prison bank account, um, and then what happens is you're, you're able, once a week, your money drops down, on there's a thing called a kiosk. A kiosk looks like a job centre point. It's like a computer. You can book dent visits on there. You can book. You can order your canteen on there. Order your food on there. Everything's done from the fucking kiosk, pretty much. Yeah, you'll understand why, when when you land at the prison why that is. Um, so yeah. So when your money goes with you, your money obviously lands over. That enables you to buy credit, uh, toiletries, cards for your loved ones. Sweets, chocolate, crisps, coffee, tobacco. If that's you, if that's what you like, you like. So you can order everything on that. So you need money when you go to prison. Trust me on that one. Uh, if you've got if you've got thousands in the bank and you you leave you take your bank card with you, you're gonna struggle to get your bank card back out of your prop and hand it back to your family. Um, so learn from my mistake when I first got it. Well, it wasn't a mistake. It just because I weren't able to get my. I didn't know I was going to prison, did I? Right, so yeah, I left my bank card on the table. <clears throat> if you've got your own property that you, but you live alone, right, get some keys cut for your friends or your family or your missus or your loved ones or whoever's going to be looking after you, your accommodation while you're away. Because like I said, when I went to prison, I ended up in strange ways for the first time, right? First time in prison, landed in strange ways, yeah. Soldiered it out, fucking it. I just dealt with a situation that was in front of me and stuff. But it took me fucking nearly four weeks, right, to get my keys from my personal property that was in the... Obviously, when you when I went to prison with my house keys, yeah, they take it off you and put it in the back, right? And it took me... I moaned and moaned and moaned for weeks, yeah, and I was on the case, yeah. Eventually, after four weeks, I was able to hand them out on a visit. Um, <clears throat> the girl that I was with at the time took receipt of them, and then she passed them to my mum. Um... The keys thing's a big thing, trust me. I had take, I had food on my side, yeah. I had a pizza from, like, the night before, right? And it was all mouldy and shit and fucking hanging, mate. If you've got pets as well, uh, obviously you're going to need your friends or your family to let themselves in to look after your pet. So get a key cut in in advance of you going to prison. Trust me, trust me, trust me. I'm telling you everything. I don't need to tell you all this. I'm telling you to help people that could end up in prison. If you're living with your family and stuff, you're sweet as not. But again, even if you live with your family, you tell them, look, right... This is like I'm I, I, like I'm taking these with me, but if I need more clothes and stuff, can you bring me more down and stuff? You've only got like a 28 day window once you land in prison. Every prison's different, but the prison I've just got out of, you get 28 days to put things in on your on your prop. For those that don't know, your prop means your property card, things that you're allowed. Right, so things that you're allowed. Right, let's move on to this. Right, this every prison is different, like I've just stated, but this is pretty much right. You'll see there. I'll just zoom in for that for you. Right. Right, let's go through it. Right, so when you go to prison, you're allowed 10 tops, right? So that includes vests, jumpers, T-shirts, right? You're not allowed any yellow, no football shirts, um, for obvious reasons, football rivalries and stuff. No yellow and no camouflage because they seem to think if you're wearing camouflage clothing and you escape from prison and you lie in the grass, no one will be able to see you, you become invincible. It's a security risk, blah, 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 load of bollocks. Uh, right, so 10 tops, right? That includes vests. So if you take two vests, you're only allowed to take eight T-shirts, right? You see where I'm going, yeah? So 10, 10 tops, including vests, jumpers, T-shirts, right? 15 when you're enhanced. For those, don't know, for those that don't know what enhanced means, enhanced means it's your IEP status. Your IEP means incentives, earn privileges. In other words, um, if you're good, in layman's terms, if you're good for three months and you don't get in any shit, you become enhanced, when you get when you become enhanced, you're allowed five more tops. You also get an extra visit a month, and you're allowed couch visits and stuff. And you can also buy like a PlayStation Two <clears throat> on on the catalog, but the catalog's overpriced. You'll see what I mean about that. You're allowed one jacket, so one coat, one jacket. Again, it's not allowed to be yellow, and it's not allowed to be camouflaged. Um, three pairs of shorts, advisable to wear shorts and stuff. Uh, everyone gets about in shorts and stuff. And obviously, if you go to the gym, you're gonna need shorts to work out in, aren't you? Right, fourteen pair of boxer shorts. Uh, one belt lightweight, uh, one belt simply because one belt and it's got to be lightweight because if it's a big hefty thing, you can wrap it around your knuckles and you fucking jar someone, can't you? So it'd be classed as a weapon. Um, so yeah, that's that. You're allowed one dressing gown, but again, this is only when you get enhanced. You're not allowed a hood because obviously people can pull you back by it and all that stuff. But once you become enhanced, so once you've been good for three months and you've been a good little boy, you're not getting any sort of trouble and all that rest of that shit, uh, you're allowed to you're allowed to have a dressing gown sent in. 
right? Two pairs of pyjamas, right? That's me screwed. I don't wear pyjamas. I sleep star ball naked. I've done since I was about six years old. I hate pyjamas, the restrictor. But you're allowed two pairs, right? No yellow or camouflage again. Uh, security risk and all that fucking bullshit. Right, seven pairs of bottoms, right? That, um, you get nine when you're enhanced. You're allowed nine when you're enhanced, right? So seven pairs of tracky bottoms. Don't be wearing, I, I took one pair of jeans, yeah, because obviously when you go on your visits and stuff to see your loved ones, you want to wear your best clothes. Everyone wears the best clothes when they go in on the visits and stuff. So I don't, so the, everyone's different though. If you get about in trackies 24 seven, then you wear trackies, don't you? Uh, so you're allowed seven pair of tracky bottoms, nine when you're enhanced, yeah? Three, pair, three pairs of footwear, so trainers, things like that, trainers and shoes, but don't wear shoes because it's fucking stupid, yeah, when you want to be comfortable when you're getting about the prison and stuff on the wing, if you go into the gym and stuff, because you get free use of the gym and stuff, uh, three pair of trainers will suffice, yeah, you're only allowed three, one pair of flip-flops, flip-flops, to be honest, you're only allowed to wear them to and from the shower, but I was a cleaner on my last stretch, I wore them pretty much all the time, comfortable, easy to get about in, you know what I mean, uh, you're allowed one pair of slippers, yes, people do wear slippers in prison, if you're just about to get locked up, you've got half an hour to bang up, people go for a shower, they, st they might stick on the pyjamas, they might stick the fucking um, slippers on, and they might get about in slippers, everyone's different, right, you're allowed one watch, yeah, right, don't be taking, if you've got some big hefty watch that's worth grand, yeah, don't be taking that to prison, because it'll be put, taken off you, and put into your prop, yeah, and you get that when you get out, right, don't bother, um, you're allowed one watch, it's not allowed to be digital, um, the, the, talking about like, the, you know these fucking like smart watches and stuff, like iPhone watches and stuff, like, not allowed any of that, so you know, uh, it's not allowed to be a copy, and it's got to be worth under 50 quid, underlined, yeah, so just, just like bog standard watch to tell the time, that's pretty much all you need, yeah, when you're in prison, um, you can order a guitar on reception only, catalogue, and you must be an hand, so, I, I've never seen a fucking cat. I've never seen a guitar in prison, and if it did, it'd be used as a weapon to hit someone over the head. I'm all joking, <laughs> right? Religious artifacts. If you're Muslim, if you're Buddhist, if you Sikh, if you're Christian, if you're Roman Catholic, um, you're allowed religious artifacts on reception only. So you've got to take them in with you. Yeah, um, take them with you. So some people have Buddha beads, some people have a cross around the neck. A lot of the travellers have a cross around the neck and stuff. Uh, Sikhs wear like a certain band. Uh, Muslims and stuff like prayer hats and like um, prayer mats and stuff. Uh, you are allowed them because obviously there's a lot of, the prison's diverse. There's a lot of different people from different cultures, different backgrounds. Um, right, this is what it says as well. This is a disclaimer. Every prison is different, right? I need to state that. But this is what it states here, right? You have 28 days to hand in your property, Right. Um, after the 28 days, you'll only be able to exchange your items at the six month point, right? So what that means really to layman's terms for those that don't know is if you've gone to prison and you forgot something, right? Say you forgot, you've only taken five t-shirts or something like that. What it means then is that your family are able to bring in the rest of the things on your prop, yeah, to top your prop up. So if you if you get nicked and you've got, a, you've got two t-shirts and like two pair of shorts and a couple of boxes, your family can bring in items for up to 28 days. You only get one drop-off point, right, one time. So you can't bring in, like, a pair of socks one day, a pair of boxes the week after. You've got to do it all at one drop, right? It's normally done before you go on a... Before your friends and family come to see you in prison. <clears throat> you need to tell them your sizes and everything before you go to prison. Like I say, that's what you write down on your A4 sheet before you go. Um, and your friends and family can turn up on one occasion... In 28 days, you've got one occasion to drop clothes off for the loved one, right? Um, if you exceed the amount of things you've got, they'll just get turned away. So if you bring in like 20 tops and stuff and you've got five on your prop, you'll only be allowed five in. You understand? Um, so that's that. Uh, and then once the next time you're allowed to hand out clothes, uh, have clothes handed in is at the six months after you've done six months. So that's very, very important. Every prison is different and stuff. You'll know what I mean as time goes on and stuff. But like I say, when you go to prison, have money on you. Um, have a list of your friends and family's phone numbers and written down. What, what you should do really is your friends and your family write down the full name as it appears on their ID, right? Their address, the date of birth, right? You'll, you'll understand why because you've got to get them cleared for visits and stuff, right? Or un Unless you're on visits, vi uh, visiting orders and stuff. But write them all down the details and stuff yeah the name the date of birth their address right also write down on a piece of paper a list of numbers phone numbers uh, landlines mobiles 
blah 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 because like i say you're going to need them phone numbers when you get to prison because you're going to need to ring your loved ones and your friends and your family to not to let them know where you are and stuff like that it's as simple as that really um yeah so i'm hoping this is going to help people a little bit give them a bit of, a bit of an heads up and stuff the thing is with like i say if you know you're going to prison even with your mobile phone you're not going to need your mobile yeah you can they can put it in your prop but do you really want to leave your phone in a prison in the back of the prison yeah no i don't i i, I left mine trust me right uh so like i say i wrote down phone numbers i wrote down date of births i wrote down my, i put my bank card i put my pin number so that if my friends and family need to access money to send me money then they can send me money um obviously there's there's other ways you can send money in like postal order made payable to the governor again every prison is different you have the postal order you go to the post office you can get that that done there um the, the quickest way is an electronic payment thing but um when you get in when you do an induction in prison you'll be taught that so you can tell your friends and your family and stuff they can send you payments it's called a pts payment um so yeah that's pretty much all i can say for now guys hope this give you a bit of an heads up anyway um so always be prepared when you go to prison put things in place before you go get keys cut write down phone numbers because when you land at the prison you're going to need them it's as simple as that right guys thanks a lot for listening if there's anything you want me to speak about please feel free to drop me a comment subscribe follow share speak to you soon guys bye